Hello guys, and welcome to this guide on how to climb with Quirky. First off, let's look at why you would want to play this comp right now. The comp has a very strong early and mid game. Quirky is very flexible with items, and Morello just got a massive buff. You run Morello Sona in this comp, and that item on that unit is just straight up broken right now. And lastly, the comp is easy to play, and comes with simple transitions, early, mid and late game. In this comp you play Ida's solo frontline, who forces the enemy team to clump up around her. Your cannoneers deal AoE damage. Meanwhile Quirky shoots his rockets at the frontline, while Revolt spawns even more rockets hitting the whole enemy team. At the same time, Sona stuns the enemy backline, and it all results in a very solid mix between physical and magic damage. Quirky's best items are Rageplate, a giant slayer, plus one. The Rageplate is good because it also stacks while Corky shoots his mini rockets during his ult, and the Giant Slayer helps him take down massive frontlines so he can get to the backline even quicker. He also works well with Hand of Justice, Infinity Edge, Last Whisper, and Deathblade. And you can also build QSS so he doesn't get CC'd. He even works with Jewel Gauntlet, since his ultimate does deal some magic damage, and the crit that you get from the item is decent. Some great supporting items for this comp are Static Shift and Spark. They shred the magic resist on the enemy team, allowing your team to deal more magic damage. And lastly, Morello is very strong right now. The healing reduction is super solid, and the plus 50 AP you get now is just ridiculous. On first carousel, you want to go for Belt that builds into Morello or Sunfire. You can also go for Rod that builds into Rageblade and Morello, and you can also go for Bow that builds into Giant Slayer or Rageblade. Early game, you want to play around these core units. The earlier you can hit Trainer, the better, because the earlier we can start feeding our Namsi. At level 5, we can play Shen for Bruiser, and at level 6, we can play Senna to get 3 Cannoneer online. If you hit a Lulu, you want to swap out the Heimer and play her instead, and you want to put your damage items on Tristana and your tanky items on Shen. Alternatively, we can also play a Mage variation of the early game. From this butt here, we play Silas for Bruiser, and then we can play Lilia for 3 Mage. Put the tanky items on Silas, and we still put the damage items on Tristana. Okay, let's go back to the core variation. On 4-1, you want to level to 7 and roll for Corky. Once you hit Corky, you want to play him and put the damage items on him instead. And from here, once you hit Idas, you want to psych Shen and Senna and play Idas instead. Solo frontline Idas and put the tanky items on her. Itemizing Idas is really important in this comp, since she's going to be your main frontline. She works really well with Warmarks, Gargoyle, Sunfire, Bramble Vest, Dragon Claw, Redemption, and if the Shimmer Scale item is Diamond Hands or Mogul's Mail, you also want to put those on Idas, and the Big Gem as well, just for the extra HP. Meanwhile, if the Shimmer Scale item is Draven Sex or Gamplus Blade, you want to put them on Corky. If it's Goldmancer Staff, you can put it on Corky and then put it on Sona once you hit her. At level 8, we can play Orn for Bruiser, and we can also put in a Guardian to buff our Idas. But ideally, you want to play Sona. She works really well with Morello. Just bear in mind that if you have Morello, you don't need to build Sunfire. At level 9, we can then play Bard, giving us Mystic, an extra mana on hit for our whole team. And to cap out this board, we want to swap out Time Cange for a better unit. You can play a Guardian instead, and you can also play Yasuo, who works really well with BT and Edge of Night. And later into the game, you also want to swap out Jinx for another legendary unit, either Soraka or Zoe. If you get your hands on a Guardian Emblem, this one works really well on Yasuo. It makes him really tanky, and it buffs your Idas too. Another transition we can make is into Siphon Frontline. This variation is good to know, especially if you have a hard time hitting Idas, and if you hit a Siphon 2 on your rolldown. From the mate variant, we go 7 and play Corky and Siphon. We put the tanky items on Siphon, who's gonna frontline and CC the whole enemy team. At level 8 we can play Sona, giving us Rebel, and potentially we wanna swap out our third mage for Zoe. Morella is still insane on Sona here. If you do build it, don't build the Sunfire on Siphon. And to cap out this variant, at level 9 we put in Bart, and start itemizing Zoe, who works really well with mana items and static shift. The leveling for this comp uses the standard forecast carry leveling curve. You want to pre-level to 4 on 1-4 if you're sitting on a lot of 2-cost pairs, else you level to 4 on 2-1. Next you need to decide if you want to pre-level to 5 into the carousel. You do this if you're win streaking and still sitting on a lot of 2-cost or maybe even 3-cost pairs, else you level to 5 on 2-5. Try to hit 20 gold into Crux, that's good econ. And then on 3-2 we level to 6 and roll for a bit of upgrades. As a rule of thumb, you don't want to roll below 20 to keep some econ. Good econ and a good leveling curve is going to help you a lot with winning games. If you get these fundamentals right, you're going to have a very easy time climbing. Now for the late game, on 4-1 we always level to 7 and roll for our core units. Again, try not to spend all your gold, you still want some gold left to econ so you can hit level 8. If you didn't have to roll a lot for your board and you hit a lot of upgrades on 4-1, you can level 8 on 4-5. If you had to roll a lot and you're not super rich, you can do it on 5-1. 
you want to roll the majority of your gold at level 8 and try to 2 star most of your board before you consider going 9. If you're a mega high roll, you can go fast 9 on 5 3. Normally, you do it on 6 1, 6 3, or 6 6. Now let's look at what augments are good when you're playing Corky. All the cybernetic augments work great into this comp. Just remember to split out your items to get the most value out of this one. Stand United is a lot of damage and very easy to stack. On your final board you have around 10 synergies, so you're gonna get a lot of value. Weak Spot is great, the ammo reduction is good, but the healing reduction is a real MVP here. And meanwhile Hotshot is solid AoE damage and also healing reduction. Gadget Expert is great, you get a static shift which is good on its own, and on top of that you get a little bit of extra true damage. Electro Charge can be really good on Idas. You're gonna have one tanky dragon by the end of this game, and your Idas is actually gonna do a lot of damage with this one. Component Grab Bag is always solid, more items to play around, and you can also go for Orn items into this comp. The best items on Corky are Triforce, you can also go for the Cleaver, or you can go for a tanky item for Idas. Ascension can definitely work in this comp. You have a big frontline, allowing your team to survive until Ascension pops. And meanwhile, Verdant Bale provides CC immunity for your whole team. With this one, your backline is gonna cast and attack freely without getting cucked by stuns and other annoying stuff. Revel Heart and Cannoneer Heart are worth to go for if it's tier 1. If it's tier 2 and 3, I don't think these augments are really good. You mainly want to go for it if it's tier 1. Best Friends can provide some more armor for your frontline and some more attack speed for your backline as well. And lastly, Second Wind is really solid here. It's gonna provide some insane heals for your Idas. And that is the end of this guide. If you enjoyed this and found it helpful, make sure to sub and leave a like. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.